So I um, one of the things I've done, I'm working from home, uh, yeah. as are most folks here, as you're well aware. Uh, one of the things I did compared to last week's show is I've upped the bit rate on uh, both Facebook, uh, YouTube, and Twitch in terms of the stream output. So if you guys are running into a lot of stutter like step viewing, let me know. Otherwise, I'm trying to do this so that I can uh, have as good looking a game client as I can from my home com computer. So let me know. Also, welcome everybody. Welcome to Court of the Rings here on Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook. I'm uh, DDO, or <laughs> Lotro's Community Manager. Oh, God. I am Lotro and DDO's Community Manager. Barely know what day it is. I think it's almost a weekend or something. Anyway, it's noon. Welcome to Court of the Rings. We're going to do something special today, and I'm looking forward to this. Uh, this has been something that we have, I've wanted to do for a while, and that is to do a Hobnanigan stream. So we are on Landreval, and uh, it looks like we've got... I mean, at the very least, we've got enough for, let's see, one, two, three, four. We got five on my end, and we've got a few less on the other end. And uh, let's see, five, six, seven, unfortunately. I'm hoping we can pull in a few more people. Uh, so if you are on Landreval, come on over. Hey, Gumps, Druid, Seamonk, Esther, Yiki, Bloodborne, Rowan, Adrin, Abitali, and other people. And what is what is beeping at me? I think I need to turn off Teams. Okay, that should take care of it. All right, so I see us as, what, uh, one, two, th two or three players short for two 5v5 teams. And one player too many for a 3v3. Uh, but I think if we don't get a few other people here in a minute, we'll probably just have to do a rotating and do 3v3. Now, uh, for those of you who don't know, Hobnanigans is a regular event uh, that happens as a bonus. And when it's active, you can go to the Hobnanigan fields and play this game with your friends. You get... Uh, basically little tokens of things and then you trade those in for various rewards and it's kind of a, a long older event uh maybe not the most uh thing in the world i it looks like maybe i'm this is the 5v5 field though right no, this is the 3x3. Three three. Okay, which one's the 5v5 then? Is that this one over here? Ah, right, here we go. One behind us. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know if we're going to have enough for 5v5 though. If we do, that sounds awesome. But if we don't, then we should probably do a 3v3, huh? So why don't I actually not be, because I can't pick up the, the thing here because I'm on the wrong team and the, we've got three already on the 3v3 field uh, of the bats picked up. So why don't I act as camera person for this first one and uh, let you folks get started on uh, Hopdanigans, the first round. Is that okay? Yeah, we should probably use field three because it looks like those other folks are already using field two. Oh, okay. I assumed they were with us. They're not with us? Okay. I don't think so. They've been there for about an hour. Okay. That's fine then. Yeah, we'll use field three then. Well, then we're actually one short then, aren't we?
So, uh, while this is kind of getting set up and all that sort of thing, let me just go around the news a little bit. You know, we do have our bonuses continuing to go active here. Let me uh, quick call that up. And call up uh, this afternoon's beacon to make sure I didn't miss anything else. So, uh, we do have all of our quests, instances, and skirmishes, including those in expansion packs, open through April 30th. The Curator is also here through April 30th. There's, uh, this is the final weekend for a 10% Virtue XP boost that runs through April 6th. Uh, the Baggins Birthday event is through April 6th as well. Uh, the other piece that uh, we just did yesterday is we got a free coupon for peeps. And let me call up that coupon for you. It's a free pig in a blanket housing decoration. And you could use the coupon code sleeping pig now through April 30th. It is a 10 per account redemption. Uh, so you can get them on a whole bunch of different worlds or what have you. So, all right. Uh, remind me which side is which. Blue, this is blue and that's red. So let me call blue. Hello there. Might I speak with you a moment? Cool. Looks like we are going to be, uh, do it. So the first thing I want to do is actually make some space on my hot bar for a couple of things. Oh, also, by the way, we could talk about this if you guys want to. Ooh. What happened to my... Oh, there it is. Drag it to the hot bar so that you can easily uh, do the thing. Target it. Give it a big old kick. Get it through the other team's goal. Score. 10-minute matches. And there you go. It's not as easy as you think, however. And as the game goes on, some random abilities and such get unlocked. There is an opportunity, as we see here, for some hay bale obstacles. And it generally helps to coordinate a little bit bit with your friends to get them out of the goal no i played uh i guess it was three matches yesterday evening and out of those three matches i won exactly uh one of them <laughs> but i did win a match so hey you know that's that's positive oh no uh -huh. and now that's how that's how it's done folks the other team scored but i got a first kick there you go Yeah! And we scored. Otherwise, I would say the, the main focus is we are preparing uh, update 26 for a bull roar preview in the relatively near future. I don't think it'll be next week. I think it may be the week after that. But it kind of depends how things go. Um, well, with a whole bunch of stuff. So we're... um. As are just about everybody uh, around the world, but especially in the United States and especially in the Boston area, uh, working from home. So pretty much all all work is being done remote at this point, which makes the communication a little more challenging in some cases. Although, you know, we're a pretty high tech company and are comfortable using things like Slack and Zoom and all those other kind of things that have, have kind of become a... A staple of our world in recent weeks. But we are working toward a bull roar preview, and I think it'll probably be not next week, but the week after, most likely. Although there's a slight chance it'll be next week. 
The other piece I'd say that we're working on is the producer's letter, and I've got some good news on that, and that is I am waiting for one final sign-off before I actually publish the darn thing. Uh, so that means uh, we could potentially have a producer's letter any day now. Uh, I just need, like I said, just need one more formal sign-off um, that we're required to do. And as soon as that comes in, we're good, so... I'm also kind of happy that, um, so the producer's letter is a pain in my keister is what it is, <laughs> but it, uh, uh, but it, this year in particular was a, a little bit, uh, uh, of a lot of work. Um, what we ended up doing is kind of sort of bypassing the producer's letter and releasing most of the information that was going to be in the OG producer's letter, uh, and we, and this egg will freeze others. Um, we just released it on the Pax East party informally. Instead of putting it out in a public thing, we were just like, well, fine, let's just, let's just say it. <laughs> so then we ended up doing basically a, a second producer's letter, which is, you know, okay, now that we've told them everything, what else can we say? Uh, and that, it, because there are more things that we we're in the process of getting ready to announce. So those things are going to be in the next producer's letter, which means that uh, the producer's letter is not going to be a repeat of information you already know. Some of it will be. Maybe about half of it will be. And not everyone caught the news from PAX East, so that's fine. But um, there's a new news in there, and that should be pretty exciting. And that could be coming out any day now. I'm even hoping it may be. I mean, we'll see. God, I hate to... I always promise things on the live stream and then or regret it later. There's a chance it'll be out by the end of the day today. We'll kind of see how it goes. But if it's not out today, it'll be out... Should be early-ish next week, I'd think. So that's good. So yesterday evening, I was playing a 3v3, and then when ultimately we lost a couple of people because it was like 1 o'clock in the morning, uh, we went and played uh, 2v2, which is actually possible to do in Hobnanigans, although it, it does change the game a little bit. Some of the design doesn't maybe hold up quite as strongly, but it is possible to do if you don't have a full 3v3. And the way you can do that is basically leave the field so it resets, retalk to the person, and then you can grab a second bat so that you can do a 2v2 or even a 1v1 if you really want to. Although I can imagine that might be uh, a little bit on the strange side. You have to leave, obviously, before the match starts, not while the match is going. It's a little hard to do, I think, with random strangers, but, for example, with the teams I was in in voice chat, we were doing some coordination toward once we kind of got the hang of it. And we were able to do things... Like, one of the easier ways to get it down the field is to kind of play it a little bit like soccer, where you've got two people basically coordinating their kicks back and forth time-wise. And that allows you to sort of work with the cooldown timers in a way that you can pass this stuff back and forth uh, and be fairly successful. Oh, holy moly. There you go. Yes, so I am a vegetarian and have occasionally in the past even been a member of some politically active vegetarian organizations. So I am sensitive to the fact that we're kicking chickens, but they seem to be fine. And we're just, this is a game. So it's all right. It's all right. Maybe Peter would disagree with me.
Yeah. There's a chance, you know, these things kind of close off one of the gates as well when, uh, per round, these sort of random elements come into play. I have had some difficulty kind of getting the targeting to work on back and forth successfully between targeting the chicken and targeting the players for the freeze. But, you know, that's me. Oh, and then, you know, now at this point we've got a fast kick going on. That's nice. Because this allows you to do basically two kicks, right? also notice you can kind of do a little bit of a wind up on the kick um, if you time it just right. Ah, oh, hey, nice. What happens in a tie? Do we each get five or ten? No, we each get five. Okay. That works for me. So, but we're still a little short for a 5v5 though, aren't we? One, two, three, four, yeah, five. So. Yeah. Did that not work? It's gonna send persimmon a tell. Play saying turn to order. And I'll do camera person so I can also answer some questions in that while we're doing this. Uh, so yeah, we've got Hobnanigans running through the weekend. The Spring Festival continues through April 13th. This is our final weekend to get double bonus points in the Lotro store. That's through the 5th. Uh, the uh, sales this week are to relive your favorite chapters. It's 30% off Valar's. And the reason I bring that up is this is the first time that we're putting the 120 Valar on sale. So yeah, you can get 30% off the 120 Valar if you want to right now. And then the weekly coupons, a plus 5% attack damage boost. ATK up is the coupon code, along with Sleeping Pig, uh, which is through April 30th, 10 per account on that one. Oh, okay, that's fine then. We'll, we'll just do another round with the three of us. So Enigma, I, I would love a one... Actually, now that I've been playing this a little bit, there's a couple of things I'd love to do with Hobnanigans. I just don't know that the team has any plans to do so. But if they want to, I am totally down.
one of the things I'd like is to, like you say, have a have a 1v1 version, maybe. Although I, it might be a little weird. You'd have to have, like, no cooldowns or super quick cooldowns or something. And then I'd also like to see us adjust some of the pricing on the rewards, because they might be a little redonkulous. So... Unlike the higher end pets. <laughs> oh shit, use the twelve comes past the bees, please. Okay. So you aren't going to release anything that was set up Paxis because Paxis was delivered in a very confusing fashion, Yiki says. Yeah, uh, my understanding is basically all that stuff is going to be in there. And the producer's letter as well, because some people didn't see the Paxis news or only depend on the producer's letter. Or frankly, it puts it in a place that for future reference, people can look it up when we set it. But there's new stuff in the letter as well. If we had released, let's just say... January's late January's letter as it was in late January then there wouldn't have been much new information in it but we've been able to add some things and I think it should be a pretty fingers crossed hopefully a letter you appreciate All right, uh, let me head over to YouTube here. We're looking for what? One more? One more, huh? I think that one guy wandered off. That's fine. Uh, the simon is loading back in, though. Yeah, that should be fine. Well, I'm just answering some questions while we do this. How are we dealing, Mr. Alex Manas, over on YouTube, with the, quote, overpopulated servers during the COVID-19 um, issue? The server lags have been huge uh, in the past few weeks. We are aware of server issues. It's been more of an issue over on the other game, frankly, than, than over here. But we're aware that there's stuff happening over here as well. What we have done is made sure our environment is rock solid. One of the, our tech ops people uh, worked all over the weekend, frankly, last weekend, uh, working on hardware, making sure things are good. It's true that we're seeing, as people are well aware, some sort of really big turnout right now in game. But really, it's not a hardware issue that we can tell. Uh, other than, say, the land block loading thing, which still needs to go in, and a few other odds and ends. So we don't yet have a smoking gun on the Lotro side, but it's something we're continuing to look at. And, like I say, our tech ops people, it's their number one priority for both games. So they put in quite a few hours, and hopefully we'll we'll get things looking pretty good here in the near future. One, two, three, four, four. Okay, we're still five. We're one short here. Also, hello everyone on Facebook. Ria, Mason. Loving the new Spring Festival, Steed? Me too. Yay! You do have to redrag this to your hot bar every time, which kind of would also like to see adjusted. I've been having uh, a little difficulty getting my PS4 controller to work well with Lotro recently. I had it all key mapped for a while where it was just working fine. And then I think we might have done something with X input that caused a few issues, at least for me. Because what I usually do is use a PS4 controller using direct input or input mapper, I guess is the third party program. And then you can use, it treats it like basically an Xbox controller and you can just key map uh, the PS4 controller, however you want to, in the Lotro settings. And it just works for the most part, except that I've been having a few problems with the deep or with the analog sticks on the PS4 controller in a way that's made it not very functional for use in Lotro lately. 
But I bring that up because I think using a controller for hobnanigans might be the way to go. Try hooking up your uh, MIDI keyboard so you can play music with us? No, I don't actually have a MIDI port on this computer. I could get one. I mean, it's not too much work to get a MIDI to USB or whatever, but. Right yeah, I, I as you Tellurian points out, I think if if we want to one of the things that we could very much <laughs> stand to do perhaps would be to adjust some of the reward pricing in Hobnanigans. I would love to see us do that. However, out of a Whatever it is they're working that is probably more important to address my personal hobnanigans needs. Um, but I would like to see us uh, perhaps lower the cost on some of that because it's a little... Like the 10, even the 150 doesn't sound outrageous to me. But some of those 2,000 ones that cost, what, like 2,000 tokens? That's, I think, a little questionable. Although you can trade them. I mean, they are, the tokens are tradable, so that's nice at least. So you could, uh, for example, for some of the housing stuff, you could um, coordinate with your kinmates to get kind of a, a farm going and things like that to trade tokens and get whatever it is you need for your housing decorations. So it, it's possible. Um, it's just a of tokens. High level craft supplier near the Westgate and Bree was is a good suggestion. Um, I've not heard of any plans to do something like that, but I'm down. Yeah, perhaps a, a method by which to cancel a match, as it were. Someone is saying, you know, they've, they've had a situation where people have left mid-game and then they've been kind of stuck. And my suggestion for that is to, um, I, I would, it would be nice if there's a way to, like, cancel Hopnanigans in progress, but... Or more easily, like have a team captain kind of set up or something like that, but... But, you know, the game is ultimately, you know, to some extent, you want to get into a position of, well, how much time do we really want to spend on Hobnanigans versus other priorities with the game client? Because it, you know, it works and it's fun. My main suggestion is that we just need to drop some of the costs on these items by a dramatic order of magnitude would be my recommendation. Technically, you can even buy these tokens in the auction house and that, although I noticed, uh, at least on Landreval last night, there weren't any for sale. Get out of my way, field three referee. I'd also like a better way to target these guys, to be honest. I think some of the targeting is a little challenging sometimes. At the very least, it'd be nice if you could hit delete to select nearest object, and that would work. I think in terms of interest of a new Bingo Boffin style quest chain, uh, I'm sure, like, given the time and ability, Mate of Lions would probably love to do another one. But I think, you know, the 
you're committing to such a large amount of work for, like, say, another Bingo Boffin style quest that, you know, I don't know that Maid of Lions available work hours would really be conducive to that. But maybe. I was actually, uh, someone had said, uh, there was a, what, a, a Locher Legendarium article recently where someone had, in that article, had suggested that we do another height bolt. And uh, I heard some team members saying that they'd love to do that as well someday, but, you know, where's the time, so to speak? Yeah! That's playing Hobnanigans. I had a blast last night, and I'm having fun today, too. This is one of the more fun times I've had on the stream for, for a while. Dope. No, not another height bolt, huh? Okay, no. Proof you can't please everyone, I guess. All good ideas are also bad ideas. <laughs> Ooh, a jousting style thing. That sounds cool. Although I haven't. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I would jousting would be interesting. I think maybe. I don't know how you would gamify it though. I I've seen a few jousting video games over the years, and I've never really seen one be very successful. But. So I think the, the rules of jousting are actually such that gamifying it uh, in a exciting and successful video game is not as easy as you'd think. Yes, uh, we will be, I mean, we are working to reopen character transfers. Um, it's something we're actively working on. We want them back, too. Hopefully we'll have news in the near future on that. I know it's the same thing I've been saying for months now, but I can't lie. I don't want to lie. I said, I think, last week that uh, it should be a matter of weeks, and I am staying sticking with that at this point. This so. this person to quit the chat. All right, so I'm going to have uh, um, Field Commander Scott uh, take my side of this game, and I'm going to just try to do a little bit of kind of camera work from the sidelines so I can answer some questions and, and that sort of thing. So the thing about jousting is it's more than just aiming. Sorry, what was that? The gentleman with the uh, shovel wanted to play. Okay. And I use the term gentleman very loosely because he's up again. All right. 
There we go. We get two more questions. Not enough good quivers, El Marcella says. Okay. Uh, it sounds like something we could definitely do. When is PVM going to get its much needed balance rework? Um, nothing to announce. I, uh, we do have some PVP related news that we're going to be saying in the near future. But in terms of a top-down rework of the PVMP system, no plans for that. Uh, some time ago, uh, Camson14 says on YouTube, there was talk about a new class. Is it still something we want to do? Yes, as a matter of fact. So the last jousting game I played that was even remotely successful was way back in the early 90s, really in 80s, except I played it in the 90s, uh, on the Apple IIe, and it was a game called Chivalry. I don't know how many of you out there, there may be someone out there who's like, Chivalry! Uh, it was an attempt to do a combination board game video game. Back in the 80s on the Apple IIe and I believe um, Commodore 64 had it as well. And the idea was it was sort of a medie medieval tabletop game. And then you'd roll, you'd do a little spinner and you'd go on little places and then you'd play games. And there were things like archery and jousting and I don't even remember what else. But a whole bunch of other different things at the end. And... Uh, I used to play that, but ever since then, I've yet to see a jousting game that has any kind of mechanics that are fun. I haven't seen many jousting games, but I do think there's been one or two over the years. I remember playing one back, and I guess it was probably the mid 2000s at some point, and it just was not great. <laughs> but I have passed along the Warden Never Surrender. Uh, bug K Hayes. Um, so the team is aware of it, and I do think we're going to be taking a look at it in the future. Uh, that's not really the way it works, KAS. Uh, we don't do a balance pass after fixing a bug. Uh, you know, as we've long stated, all class balance work is never-ending and ongoing. There is no such thing as a class balance pass. I mean, there is, but it's not like, now we're done. Now we move on to the other one that everything is fixed forever. And then we're going to move on to the other one now that that's fixed forever. That's just not how it, it's just not how it works. Uh, class work is a never-ending, ongoing, forever bit of work on the part of a game development team. So will there be classwork for any specific class in the future? Yes. Do I know what the next class specifically is going to be? No. Uh, typically the way it works is we're not even targeting specific classes at this point, but doing a little bit more of a shotgun approach to work on okay, fixes to a handful of classes when we can get to it. And we've done that, as you see in the release notes and, and recent updates. And we'll be doing that for the foreseeable future.
Professor Cat, they may the is asking a question. Do the quote developers know about dwarf champions have slower animations for certain skills? They might. I am not personally aware of that. So let me know what animation in particular on a dwarf champion. Because I am a dwarf champion. Well, I'm a stout axe champion. Um because I could repro that sucker pretty easy. Oh yeah, there's an arcade game called Joust. It has very little to do with jousting, and it's one of my favorite arcade games of all time. I don't know exactly what the person was on who designed Joust, but for some reason they thought, they were like, what if they were like armored knights, but in space, with space lances, and then there's like these platforms and this lava hand that'll grab them, and then sometimes pterodactyls will come out of nowhere and, and, uh, kill you and the the main object is you need to sit on the things that you're flying above oh and by the way you're all riding ostriches okay yeah 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 okay um quite the uh quite the hangover on that one i bet but still i love that game <laughs> you know <laughs> Uh, psychosis. Let me see. Don't know about that one. Uh, John, I don't have a whole lot of news to pass along today. For the most part, uh, the I think the main new news is that we are offering a free pig in a blanket housing decoration. The coupon code is sleeping pig. It's available through April 30th, and there are 10 redemptions per account, so that you can get it on multiple servers, multiple houses, whatever. So that's the first bit of new news. I guess uh, minor new news is that we're working on a Bulwer preview for update 26. That should be hitting within the next couple of weeks here, I think. This is the final weekend for double bonus points. If that matters to you. Additionally, we have added the 120 Valar to this week's Relive Your Favorite Chapters sale. So you can get a 120 Valar for 30% off. That's kind of the, the biz side of the news. Otherwise, this is the final weekend for the Baggins birthday event and plus 10% Virtue XP. Hobnanigans runs through Sunday. And we're getting ready to publish a producer's letter. We're almost there. We just got just got one last sign off to do before we can uh, officially hit publish. So that that should be happening anytime within today. If not today, then maybe Monday. If not Monday, maybe Tuesday is about what I would estimate. Uh, Phil, I did not get an auto-bestow on the Baggins quest as well, although I had actually completed it on all my characters. So maybe that's what's up, huh? That's why. <laughs> it's not repeatable. Yeah, that's what I figured. When will we get the neck get level cap barrel brie cheese? I don't know, but I think that sounds awesome. I I fully support. A, a pop -up. Oh no, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry about that, Jerry. Um, yeah, basically there is an addendum to the Bilbo's birthday thing. It's in Northern Mirkwood. Uh, which any level character can get to, but you don't get an auto pop part. You just have to ride out there. There you go. Anyway, I fully support Barrow Bree Cheese. I don't know what it is, but I like it. Oh, sure. Thanks, John. Appreciate it.
so I don't know how many of you noticed, but uh, Twitch has started this new mod view uh, thing, which is, uh, I know, which is kind of interesting. I like it. I'm trying to use it, so it's it's a little weird for me right now as I kind of figure out how to do it. <laughs> Nice. All right, how many do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Do we have eight? Is that right? Yeah, you have and of course, we have the Witch King of Angmar wants to play. Well, we only have ten minutes, so why don't we just sort of... Uh, bring in three people, whoever wants to come on in. And we'll, we'll do one more round here. Yeah, Till, I do expect higher tier difficulties of the new raid to come out in the future. Oh, thank you, Robin. Oh no, there is barrel breaches and I'm just ignorant. Unacceptable. Yes. I mean, they're not talking barrows and barrel white barrows, right? Let me... I don't know. I, actually, I've got a, a yeah. dumb little question. How many of you have done what I've done and used the stay at ho home time to rewatch the entire extended trilogy <laughs> of the OG uh, loader uh, <laughs> movies? I know I have. Yep. I got the uh, the DVD set, the the nice extended box set where you could get the little slip case for it if you bought all three. And I was lucky enough to get one of those slip cases before they all sold out. Um, I think it was from Best Buy or whatever it was at the time. So I've got a nice uh, the slip case uh, DVD set, not Blu-ray, uh, on look the Lord of the Rings movies yet, but you know. I think maybe it's a controvert. I don't think it's a controversial opinion, is it? Uh, that the extended versions are way better than the regular theatrical versions. I don't know. That's my personal opinion on it, anyway. I love the extended versions way more. Yeah, it's just a fact. Extensions are way better. Yeah. Okay. Good. Oh no. Kicked into my own goal. Don't do that. Oh no! Ah. We really need to. I would. What I'd really like to do sometime is do something really goofy, and dumb in the way I love to be dumb, and actually log on to my Cordovan admin with the detachable camera. And do the full-on uh, sportscaster narration for a Hobnanigans match with a detached camera. I would love to do that. I'd even love to, if I could even get a second person to do uh, a production with me, we could even do kind of Monday night football style. I think I might have scored against myself. 
uh, a Monday night football style, like uh, instant replay where someone in the background is doing clips and then I could put the clips up on uh, on XSplit and things like that. I haven't done any sports casting in a long time. I was, I'm not a big uh, sports person. But back in my days, uh, this was in Red Wing, Minnesota, uh, along the Mississippi River, and it would, the year would have been about 97, 98. I uh, was the co-announcer for some local, uh, the Red Wing Eagles, amateur league baseball team. And so the main sportscaster would be there to do the stuff that actually takes skill, which is, you know, how to sports cast. And I was just kind of a color commentator and, and general helper behind the scenes and did some stats and things like that, kind of helped run the boards and all that. So I ended up doing a bunch, a little bit of uh, amateur baseball sports casting back in the day. And it was uh, actually a lot of fun. And it's a lot harder than you think. Anyone who's watching a, a sporting game on television, um, it's one of those things where if you do it right, it looks effortless. But it's really hard to do it right. It really is. These people are very good at what they do. Oh, slow mo would be amazing. I love this. Yeah. Speaking of the tag arenas, I actually played the tag arenas for the first time as well, uh, not that long ago, because uh, we were having our kin night, and the kin was just like, no, oh, let's do some of these weird one-offs. Um, you know, I wanted to do a little Hobnanigans practice for today's live stream, just to kind of figure out all the kind of quirks of it. And so I, I did Hobnanigans last night, and uh, the week prior, I guess it was, we did we had a tag night, and that was a lot of fun little on the pointless side, but that's fine. It's not really meant to be something other than what it is. A minor fun activity. Honestly, I'd kind of like the chicken to be able to have some physics and bounce off you too, but I, that might cause problems. Do a chicken run sometime? I absolutely will do a chicken run sometime. Um, that is absolutely going to be a thing that I do. I don't know when. I've been promising Hobnanigans for a while now. And I'm finally doing it today. I promised PvP one time and I did it on the anniversary stream and it was kind of a disaster. So I don't know that I'll be doing that again anytime soon. But chicken runs, I'm down for. I'd also like to put on a concert someday. Yes, headbutt the chickens, exactly. Or actually, well, this would never make it past Tolkien lore. But you know, I'm a D&D &D guy, so everything's possible. If I were doing this, I'd actually turn us into the chickens, the giant chickens, and then have a small human uh, randomly sometimes that you're kicking around. So as one of the random factors of Hopnanigans, you would either be kicking chickens or you would be the chicken kicking humans. Shoot. Well, at least I'm not going to get stoned. Fast, okay.
Oh no! Jeez! <laughs> I said it the wrong way. Ah, no! Uh, server, I don't have anything to announce regarding the win on server transfers. We're well aware that it's a top priority both for the community and for us to get these back. Hopefully we'll have news in the near future. And they are destroying us on the red team this time. No! No! Ah, jeepers, they, man, they are slaughtering us. Sure, thanks, uh, Sir Garwin. Hope you're doing okay. I hope everyone's doing okay during this time. I know it's, it's scary out there. There's a lot of bad happening in the world. The virus. And I uh, hope you're all staying at home safe with your families. And if you are working, I uh, hope you're getting treated okay by your employer. And if you're one of the essential people who are doing things like, frankly, being cashiers, I've become an incredibly, it's really become clear just how important uh, those folks are to the world. And so I hope you're doing okay if that's you. All right. Hey, that was awesome, everyone. Thank you so much. Uh, that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. Thanks very much for watching. I will see you next Friday for more Record of the Rings right here on Twitch, Facebook, and YouTube. Stay tuned for some news and some other kind of cool stuff happening. You can find us over on Lotro Stream. You can find the full schedule. Uh, we have got Corey Olson coming up, Druid's Fire after that, and the full schedule through the weekend right here on Lotro Stream. Have a good time, all. Talk to you soon.